Throughout my career, I've seen many different approaches to CAD standards. Good, great, bad, and terrible. There's no one perfect way to set up CAD standards, but I think some approaches are much better than others. In this playlist, I teach you my approach. I work as a freelance CAD technician. This means that I will work with many different clients, each of whom has their own specific needs. I decided to make a generic set of standards to serve as a base point to create more specialized standards, which I'll get more into in future videos. My generic template has a basic layering system, a CTB file associated with it, text and leader styles, and a small collection of blocks, which can easily be adapted to different disciplines. These standards are also great for one-off jobs and jobs that don't really fit into any specific category. The first thing I want to discuss is line weights, also known as pen weights. There's no one correct way to assign line weights to the various colors available in a color-dependent plot style table. So let me take this time to mention right now that I use a color-dependent plot style table opposed to a named plot style table, also known as an STB file. I won't get into the differences between these two plot style tables. I will say that the main reason for me sticking with the older, color-dependent plot style table is due to the overall familiarity and the fact that the color-dependent plot style tables are much more widely used in industry. STB files are great, but they are much less common, and therefore, people are quite unfamiliar with how they work. So back to line weights and how they relate to the color-dependent plot style tables, which I'll now refer to as CTB files. Your CTB file uses colors to drive your line weights. You assign line weights to each color, and you can also assign other properties to each color. But we'll focus on line weights for now. I'll try not to repeat myself too many times, but there's no right or wrong way to set up your line weights. I do, however, recommend avoiding the temptation to transfer pen weights into line weights. Here's why. Before AutoCAD, drafting was done manually, of course, by pen or pencil and paper. A draft person had a selection of pens with different line weights. Typically, each pen contained black ink, but the pens had different colored lids and usually at least one colored stripe on the body itself. Each color represented different line thicknesses. These colors served as a visual cue to drafters as to which pen was which line weight. This saved time as it was quicker than trying to read the pen weight, usually written in a small font. A color coding system for pen weight designation and staring at lines on a computer screen are two totally different things. That's why, in my opinion, I think that borrowing the line weights from the standard pen color designations is a huge mistake. For instance, in one common system, gray represents the two millimeter pen, a very bold line. But when you look at a gray line on a computer screen, it doesn't really stand out very well, compared to say a white line with a black background or a cyan colored line. Many companies still base their standards on the old pen weights. You can set your line weights up any way you want. Just remember that there's no logical correlation between the colors of a drafting pen's lid and how you choose to set up your CTB file. Next, I'll go over my logic when it comes to assigning line weights to colors. I'll stick to line weights in this video, and I'll cover the other properties assigned to your CTB file's colors in future videos. Many of the features in my generic standards are arbitrary and based on what I personally am used to. But every decision I've made along the way is logical. I'm showing you a very good way to set up your line weights, but not the only way. I have somewhat of a hierarchy in the way I assign colors. First, I determine the color of the drawing background, usually black or white, of course. For me, black is what I'm used to, and that's what I use. Second, I more or less exclude certain colors outright. For example, I don't use blue, and by blue I mean index color number 5, not cyan. Blue can be hard on a person's eyes when using a black background. Same holds true for yellow if you're using a white background. Third, I reserve certain colors for specific purposes. I use yellow for text, magenta for leader lines, and red for things like grid lines. I also reserve white for things like elevation lines and center lines. In general, I prefer to keep white as a relatively narrow line weight. That's in case I import content and don't have time to adjust the layers before I print. 
It's safe. It's safer to have lines print as a harmless thin line rather than a really bold line that wrecks the drawing. My next step is to assign line weights based on how much each color stands out or contrast my background. Dark colors are generally thinner. If I were using a white background, the opposite would hold true. These four steps, even if followed relatively loosely, are a very good procedure to go by while assigning line weights to your CTB file. Much better than basing line weights off the colors of pen lids. In upcoming videos, I'll describe my generic standards in more detail and discuss topics including some of the additional properties associated with the CTB file, layer setup, the various styles usually included in a set of standards or a base template, including text styles, leader styles, and dimension styles, and I'll go over the process of converting my generic template into a template more suitable for a specific discipline. That's about all I wanted to cover in this first video. Hopefully it was interesting for you, learning about where the term pen weight came from. I'd love to hear your opinions on this topic, so don't hesitate to leave a comment, and thanks very much for watching.